Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor and yet another video podcast. As always, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today on the video, guys, what are the five coolest switches or levers in the 737NG cockpit? And why do I think it's those switches that are the coolest? Stay tuned. Wind 310 at 16, one right, right, right. Delta 260, Right guys, so today we're going to be talking about the five coolest switches in the 737NG cockpit. And there are a lot of switches, so we're going to have to be quite, you know, specific when it comes to deciding on them. About a week ago, I put out on my Instagram account, I put out this question to you guys. And I hope that you're following my Instagram account, by the way. And I asked, which switches do you think are the coolest ones? Now... I got hundreds of responses and I'm not going to listen to any of them because this is not a democracy. You are going to hear what I think and why I think that is the case. So let's start. Number five, the fifth coolest switch in the 737 cockpit are the landing light switches. Okay, the landing light switches are situated on the top above the captain's side on the overhead panel. They are shaped and look just like little light bulbs, just to indicate that, you know, they have to do with lighting. Uh, and they just have a really, really good, cool feel to them, all right? They are the same and have looked the same since the beginning of the 737 series. Uh, on the older 737 NGs, uh, we have retractable landing lights, we have fixed landing lights, we have runway turn-off lights, and we have a taxi light. On the newer ones, we only have a set of landing lights, runaway turn-off lights, and landing lights. Because those are the LED ones. I like the older ones better, right? Um, on the older ones, you also have kind of a, like a bar above the landing lights. So when you are cleared to land, for example, you just take the whole bar and you just click it on. And that's a sign for everyone outside that this aircraft is clear to land. It's going to light up a lot, right? They're really, really powerful, okay? The way that we use the landing lights generally is below 10,000 feet. Um, when we are clear for takeoff, for example, then, well, if we start with when we're starting to taxi, we use the runway turn-off lights and the taxi lights. And then as we're entering the runway, we turn off the taxi light and we switch on the retractable lights, the uh, landing lights and the runway turn-off lights. And the reason we're waiting with the taxi light is because we're waiting for takeoff clearance. When we get the takeoff clearance, we switch all of them on and next thing is hitting the toga switches and going. But it's just the feel of them, the look of them, and the fact that they normally indicate that we're clear to either take off and land, that makes them to come on page number five of the coolest switches in the 737 cockpit. Number four, the fourth coolest switch in the 737 is the speed brake lever, all right? The speed brake lever is sitting to the left of the throttle quadrant, and so next to the captain, and it has three different detents. It's either down, it is in flight detent, or it's on ground detent. It's also called the lever of shame, and the reason that it was called the lever of shame, especially when I did my light training, is because, you know, all the school pilots would say that the only reason that you would need the speed brake is if you have managed to not do your uh, descent planning correctly or you have screwed up in some other way. Now, that is obviously not true. The, uh, um, the speed brake is highly usable, especially if you get unexpected shortcuts from ATC or uh, if air traffic control is keeping you high for whatever reason and you need to get down fast. The what, you know, what they actually do is as you are extending the speed brake, which you, by the way, have to do very carefully, the spoilers will come up on the wings and that will add drag, which means that we can descend faster. Sounds easy enough. They are more effective at higher speeds. So if we're far out, if we can combine using speed brakes with increasing the speed, they will be more effective. And that has some aerodynamic reasons. Um, and like I said, you have to be very careful with them because if you just suddenly pull them up, you will 
definitely feel the cap sorry the, the passengers and the cabin crew would definitely feel it would come like a sudden bump and then followed by uh, what would feel like turbulence and it will not be very present especially if you're a nervous flyer so if you guys are sitting as passengers and you are coming in for landing and you suddenly start to feel that the aircraft is kind of shuddering a little bit that is most likely the pilots using the speed brakes to maybe reduce the speed to be able to extend flaps uh, or to get down onto a level where they can intercept the glide slope and start the landing. So, you know, why is it on the list? Well, it is just a cool lever. Right? You take it, you pull it, it really feels like you're handling the aircraft when you're using it. You, as soon as you start moving it, you start to feel a shudder throughout the whole aircraft and it's just a, it's just a nice, cool lever to use. Now, one thing to remember, when you do use the speed brake lever, the pilot flying, who's the one that's handling it, has to remain with his or her hand on the speed brake lever, okay? You cannot just extend it and leave it there. And the reason for that is because it's very easy to forget, especially if the workload starts increasing and you're not allowed to use speed brake together with flaps more than 10. So if you would take the gear down flap 15 and the speed brake would still be extended, you're actually exceeding limitations of the aircraft. So keep the hand on it, treat it very, very carefully and uh, enjoy. So the third coolest button on the 737 is the toga switches. Now you've probably heard about toga switches, okay? Toga stands for take off and go around switches. And that's exactly what it does. The, Toga switches are there to help the pilot to set certain thrust settings and to initiate certain modes on the flight director. So on the ground, like I was saying, when we have switched on the landing lights and we've been cleared for takeoff, the pilot flying will advance the thrust levels to around 40% to make sure that both engines are stabilized at, um, you know, have kind of spooled up equally. And then when we hear stabilized from the pilot monitoring, would hit the toga switch and the toga switch is situated on top of the thrust lever uh, just where you have kind of your index finger okay you switch that on and with one push of toga during the takeoff phase it will advance the thrust levers to the takeoff thrust that you have calculated before when you did your performance calculations and it will also uh, initiate the flight directors in takeoff mode so the flight directors will eventually once we start rotating be um, indicating the correct pitch to keep the correct speed during the climb out prior to retracting the flaps okay but there's a little a caveat here do not use the flight directors to help you rotate when you hear V1 rotate from the pilot monitoring, you need to start a nice, slow, about two and a half to three degrees per second rotation up to initially about 15 to 17 um, degrees nose up. And then once you have established in that pitch setting, then you start following the flight directors because the flight directors is not made to help you rotate the aircraft. But that's Toga during takeoff. Um, in go around, it's slightly different. So, the toga switches can be used generally below 2,000 feet or in some older um, 737s above 2,000 feet if you're coupled to a glide slope or you have the flaps out, okay? And if you hit the toga switches during approach, basically what you're telling the aircraft is that, all right, we're going to throw this away, we're going to go around. Uh, so the when you hit it with one switch all right so just one click on the toga uh, buttons it will initiate the outer throttle advancing to reduce go around thrust which tends to be around 90 91 percent or so um, the flight directors will go from whatever approach mode that you were using into initiating a climb between a thousand to two thousand feet per minute it will initially give you 15 degrees pitch up uh, and then it will you know, hold a pitch that will give you between 1,000 to 2,000 feet per minute rate of climb. If you hit the toga switches again, so you've hit it once, thrust has advanced, and then you hit it again, well then you'll get full go-around thrusts. So that is something that we would use maybe in mountains terrain where there's a lot of um, mountains around, um, because that will basically make the aircraft climb like, like a bat out of hell. 
right? It climbs crazy with, um, with full go around thrust. The reason we're not using full go around thrust all the time is because of that, because things will just happen too fast. All right? It's likely that we will make mistakes because the go around uh, altitude is going to come much quicker. We might not have time to retract the flaps like we should, or we might overspeed the flaps. So nice one push of toga will give us a nice controlled go around. Two push of toga is there if we really, really need it. But why it's on number three of the list? Well, it's kind of obvious. As soon as you press that button, something cool will happen. All right? You will either start the takeoff, which all pilots love, or you will initiate a go-around, which is something we don't do very often, and uh, things can become a bit sticky and challenging very quickly. So it's definitely coupled to adrenaline, um, and it's just a nice kind of button to push. So, number two, the second coolest switch or lever in the 737 cockpit is... Well, there's actually a tie here, all right? I had, to, I had to choose between the landing gear lever and the flap lever, and I realized that they're kind of similar in, in the reason why they're cool, okay? The reason they are cool is because they look like what they do. So um, the landing gear lever, for example, is this huge lever that comes out from the center of the, uh, the cockpit, and at the end of this huge lever, there is a tiny little wheel to indicate that this has to do with landing gear, okay? The landing gear can be uh, extended up to 270 knots airspeed or Mach 0.82, but it can only be retracted below 235 knots. And this can be a problem if, um, if you're taking off, for example, and as part of the, of the takeoff checklist, we move the landing gear from up to off to you know, depressurize the hydraulics. New pilots have had a tendency to go beyond the off position and actually inadvertently select the gear down again. Now that's not normally a problem with the actual extension because we wouldn't have reached 270 knots at that point. But if they get afraid and they realize what they've done and they suddenly move it up again, well then you might have exceeded the retraction speed. So if this happens to you, if you're a cadet and you just started and you inadvertently extend the gear as part of the after takeoff checks, just chill, take it easy, let the, let the captain know what's happened, slow the airspeed down to below 235 knots, and then you can retract the gear again and nothing really has happened. All right? Uh, the gear can be extended and used up to 320 knots, but I can tell you that if you do use the gear at 320 knots, there is going to be a horrific sound in the, uh, the whole aircraft. Like the, the amount of air noise that the gear makes at those speeds is unbelievable. So I have never been close to that. I have actually never used the, uh, the gear with speeds higher than about 240 knots, I think. Um, it's like hanging out a barn door. The aircraft will descend in a crazy manner when you use the gear. So the flap lever is similar. Its flap lever also looks like what it is. If you have a look at how the flap handle actually looks, it looks like a flap. Okay, and the flaps also are depending on speed. So because of the way that they kind of fall out behind the wings and also in front of the wings, they extend the surface area and the, the curvature of the wing. Um, so we have to be careful with the speed as we're extending the flaps. Now flaps one and flaps five, which are the initial flap steps, you can extend below 250 knots. Now we don't normally do that. We tend to reduce the speed back to around 220 knots before we um, take the first flap steps, but it's legal to do so. In order to take flaps 10, uh, we have to be below 210 knots, flaps 15 below 200 knots, flaps 25 below 190 knots, and the first landing or normal landing flaps is flaps 30, we have to be below 175 knots, and for flaps 40 is 162 knots. So um, we have to take real care um, about the speed when we're using the flaps, which is why the pilot monitoring have to monitor this carefully. The pilot flying will check the speed, call for whatever flaps setting that he or she wants. Pilot monitoring then verifies that speed checks, select the flaps, waits until it's down in the correct position, and then calls it out. Flaps one, flaps five, and so on. So why are these switches the second coolest ones done? Well, I just love the fact that they look like what they do. Um, I like the fact that, that, you know, the feel of it, the landing gear especially, it's a really big lever, you just kind of bang it down. 
um, carefully, obviously, um, but it, it just feels like you're really handling the aircraft when you're using it. Flaps are the same, you know. Um, it's, it's, it's a big, important lever to use. It looks like what it does, which makes it cool. But, guys, that means that we now only have one switch left. The coolest switch or switches in the 737, and they are, drum roll, the autopilot and auto throttle disconnect switches. The auto throttle disconnect switch is on the, uh, the yoke, so on my side, on the captain's side, it's on the left side. You click it with your thumb to disconnect. The auto throttle disconnect switch is on the thrust lever where you keep your thumb and your little finger. Okay? Uh, when you click those switches, it will completely disconnect the automatics of the aircraft. The auto throttle, when you disconnect that, you will get a flashing red auto throttle light. You will see that the auto throttle switch flicks down on the mode control panel. And when you disconnect the autopilot, you will have this very happy sounding siren notifying the, uh, the flight crew that, well, it's now up to you. I just want to wish you good luck. We're all counting on you. And you have complete control of the aircraft. The autopilot and auto throttle switches can be used all the way up to maximum altitude, all the way down. There is not a single uh, case where you cannot disconnect the, um, the automatics completely and fly it. And obviously, any pilot that's worth his or her salt will enjoy the feeling of disconnecting the automatics and really handling this big 65 ton beast by themselves, right? It is obviously the coolest switches in the cockpit. Uh, there's no question about that. And uh, yeah, that's my list of five coolest switches. Now, I know that you guys probably have another couple of switches that you would have put on the list. I know that were people talking about the um, cabin attendant button. Meh. Uh, other ones were talking about the light switch, which is kind of cool. But these, without a doubt, are the five coolest ones, right? Now, if you want to come in and discuss this, maybe you want to tell me that I'm all wrong, then come into the Mentor Aviation app, okay? And uh, it's completely free to download. Just come in there, talk to me. And I have some news, guys. Before you go, before you leave, I have some news. First of all, I want to thank the Patreons. All of you guys who are part of my Patreon crew, who helps me to preview my videos, who give me kind of feedback on thumbnails. Um, I do Skype calls with them um, when they need some advice and so on. All of you have been asking if you couldn't, you know, if, if it was any possibility that you could get premium membership and I have sorted that out. So if you're a patron above the $10 level, then just send me a message, give me the nickname that you use in the app and I will give you a premium membership in the app as part of your patronship, all right? Once again, if, you're a, if you are above the $10 level, as a Patreon, you will get premium membership inside of the Mentor Aviation app, which means that you'll be able to preview videos, you'll be able to see special material that I send out, and you'll be able to ask questions during my app live streams as part of this deal, okay? So once again, if you are a Patreon, a huge thank you to you. It's much appreciated. And um, if you're not a Patreon, but you want to be, take part of this discussion anyway, get the app, it's completely free. Go in there, take part in the discussion in the chat or in the forums or watch some of the 360 videos or whatever you might want, okay? Have an absolutely fantastic day. I am going to go and, uh, well, play a little bit with Patches and Molly's puppies. This is just one out of the four that, uh, that we have. Have, well, take care of yourself and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.